So on here then is some C diff that I've fixed to the slide and we've done a gram stain on it. But more importantly for us today, it's going to allow us to see the bacteria on the camera quite well. Okay, and you can see here the long purple strips are the actively growing C diff and there are lots and lots and lots of them. <laughs> So the C. diff exists in two different forms. So it exists as what we call a vegetative cell. Now if these vegetative or actively growing cells were to come into contact with oxygen, then they would be killed, they would die because oxygen is toxic to them. However, they can survive in the spore form. An infected individual will have diarrhoea either at the hospital bed if it's really bad or at the toilet if it's not so bad, and this will shed thousands and thousands of spores. You must do a lot of walking. Yeah, I know, it's keeping me slim, actually. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's another annoying noise today. This is my turf. This is where I do my research at the bench scale. If someone has a general infection, you give them antibiotics. But you can only get C. diff if you have had antibiotics. So there is a vicious cycle. C. diff can produce up to three toxins, toxin A and toxin B and then some special types of C. diff, which are associated with more severe cases of disease, produce a third one in addition, and this is called the binary toxin. So what we've done is to make a special lab strain which only has poison number three, or the binary toxin. And so, if I take a gene away on purpose, or I mutate some genes at random, and then I check how harmful the bacteria has become, I will know that this harmfulness is related only to the binary toxin. So, give that a spray, put it in. In this dish here are some African green monkey kidney cells. So I'll add the toxins, the toxins will get into the cell, they'll go for the same target that they do in the intestine cells and cause the same symptoms which is a loss of structure and the cells round up. It's a very visual process. You can really see the difference between healthy cells and cells which have been treated with C. diff and rounded up. So this is the dish that we prepared earlier with the toxins and the different yeah. dilutions. So we've got N, which is neat, so it's 100% the liquid that the bacteria is growing in. And then 10 to the one is where we've diluted that one in 10, and then one in 10 again, and then one in 10 again, and then one in 10 again. What we're actually showing is not really like thrilling at the minute, but it will be. <laughs> Okay, and we'll do that all the way along the plate. So now the monkey cells are in this plate here. Now I need to add the bacterial supernatants which contain the toxins, okay? My theory is that laboratory must come from the word, the same word that laborious comes from. <laughs> it is laborious. You're moving liquids from one place to another. You're taking bacteria from one place to another. But the context of what you're doing and the impact of what you're doing is what makes it all worthwhile, if that makes sense. It makes great sense to me. <laughs> so these are ready to go now. And so we've got the monkey cells at the bottom and we've added the bacterial supernatants to the top, which contains the toxins. And we're going to incubate those overnight. And hopefully tomorrow we'll see what effect those toxins, if any, have had on the monkey cells. We're using an inverted microscope to look at the monkey cells and this is one that we haven't treated with the difficile toxins. So you can see all of these individual cells and they're not all taken on the same shape but together they're forming a layer over the surface like they would in a natural kidney. And so this is what healthy cells look like. So what I want to show you now is cells that came from the same test tube to start with but the ones where we added the liquid that contained the toxins from the difficile and this is for difficile that's been growing for 24 hours. So you can see here that it's a very different story. What you see is all of the cells have rounded up and they've changed their structure and here this is where all of the round cells have clumped together and this is what happens as a result of the difficile toxins. This assures us that our difficile is definitely making toxins and that those toxins are affecting animal cells. And if we wanted, we could use this method to try and measure how harmful individual strains of difficile are and compare them to each other.